Okay, welcome back. I hope you've been enjoying playing your jug, and I hope you found a good one. Now, before we get into uh, this third and final lesson, I just wanted to mention that you might at this point be thinking, how could I ever play a whole song on the jug? It takes so much air, and I'm so out of breath by the time I play just a few notes. Well, don't worry, because uh, just like learning a lot of things, it seems hard at first until you get to know exactly what effort it requires. You find that sweet spot, you find out just how much air that you need, and uh, you'll be able to play as long as you want to because you'll be conserving your energy and you know using your energy more efficiently. So just stick with it, keep practicing, don't worry too much about that. You know, Play one song and then rest if you need to, but just know that it'll get easier. When I play uh, the jug now, um, the limiting factor is not the air, it's just holding up the jug. I have that big ceramic jug and I could play all night, but uh, after a couple hours of holding that thing, my arms start to get tired. Anyway, uh, the, the topic of our final lesson is choosing what notes to play. And this is just as important as being able to play. You have to know what notes fit into the band that you're playing with to sound good. And the jug does play a specific role in the group. Uh, you don't necessarily just play any notes you want to, but there's some notes that you're expected to play. So the first step uh, in finding your jug part is to listen to the chord changes in the song. I've got my guitar here and I'll play some chords for you and in any group there's going to be a rhythm instrument like guitar, banjo, something like that. It's just going to be playing chords and you want to try and focus in on the, that instrument and, and listen for the changes. <laughs> As those uh, chords are changing, you want to listen t for the one note that seems like it's the central note of that chord. We call that the root note or the bass note of that chord. So we got a, it's kind of the just the note that just fits in the middle of that chord. So if this is our progression. bass notes are so you can start out pl just playing those simple bass notes if you have high enough range you can pick a note that's an octave above or below those notes so for the first note you can either or it's the same note. This is a G chord, by the way, and that's a G at a higher octave and a G at a lower octave. So you can go. <laughs> Did a little run, which I'll talk about in a moment, but I had started at the high G and ended up back at the low G. Okay, so we're just picking out the bass notes. If there is a bass in the band, or if the guitar player is picking out notes, those are going to be the bass notes too. So a lot of instruments play those, so you can listen for that as an extra aid. Now the rhythm of the jug is kind of specific as well. You definitely want to play on the downbeat or the first beat of each measure, and then you could also play on the third beat if you want to. So I always divide instruments into two categories. There's the instruments that play on the one and three, the first and third beat, and the instruments that play on the two and four, the back beat or the off beat. And the jug is a uh, is a one and three instrument. So you want to hit that first note, and then I'll do the first and the third beat of each measure here. Okay, uh, just for demonstration, let me try a different chord progression. I'm going to do a standard blues chord progression now. Same three chords, G, C, and D I was playing, but they come in a different order and it's a longer progression, 12 measures long. That's why it's called the 12 bar blues. It starts with the, starts with the G. That's not a 12 bar blues. Let me try that again. So uh, this is very important to find these root notes 
Um, it's a little boring just to play just the root notes though. So once you're able to do that, you can put in what I call an alternate bass note. And that's kind of the second note that sounds good in that chord after that first root note that you have. Um, now the alternate bass note is always halfway around the octave from the root note. So it's going to be kind of a jump from one to the other. But when I play this, I think it'll sound familiar to you because you've heard this before. <laughs> So for each measure, I started by playing the root note, and then on the third beat, I did the alternate bass note. Okay, so. And remember that uh, the notes can come in a higher or lower octave. So sometimes the alternate bass note, you can pick the note that's a half an octave above your root note. Sometimes you can pick the note that's a half an octave below. So um, if I'm changing from the G to the C, I can keep going from the root note to the one above. Let's see here. Ooh, but then it gets too high. So what I usually will do is switch. And when the chord moves a big amount, I'll switch to going from the root note to the one below it. So that overall my range is kind of in the same area. So I go... that makes sense that's kind of a hard concept um, but just remember from your root note you can either go half an octave above it or half an octave below it and you can go a different direction on different chords just whatever is more comfortable for your range okay um, what should we do next um, okay so once you've got your basic uh, Oh, I was, what I was going to say is, uh, as you're listening to a band, I said you've heard this before, and if you listen to any kind of music again now, you'll hear it again. You hear, if you listen to the bass in a group, you know, the electric bass or the stand-up bass or whatever, they're almost always doing this. And sometimes the guitar player will pick out those notes too. So what's happening is that that's the role of a bass instrument is to play those notes and sometimes a guitar player is used to playing by themselves and so they've figured out ways to put those notes in along with the strumming. They're kind of duplicating what uh, a bass player or a jug player would normally do. But it's good practice to listen to that uh, whenever you're listening to music and just get that, um, get that chord progression, get those notes in your head because that's what you're going to want to play as well. And once you start playing that, the guitarist uh, doesn't have to do it. Can be free to do other things. Okay. Um, now that's that's the basic uh, that's the basic style of jug playing. It, we call it um, playing roots and fifths because the note that's halfway from the bass note is also called the fifth note of the scale or bass notes and alternate bass notes, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you're not limited to that. So once you get that mastered, you can uh, mess around a little bit more. And one way to do that is to put runs or a series of notes connecting one note to another. So as you're about to change chords, uh, you can put a series of notes that links the old bass note to the new bass note. So I'll try and go. So hopefully uh, you could hear what I was doing there. The, just the measure before the chord changed, I anticipated the next bass note and then uh, worked my way down to it with a sequence of notes. That's called a bass, uh, a bass run. Um, now, also, we've been playing just a steady rhythm, one and three, and that's really the foundation of a jug part, and it's an important role to play in any group. Somebody has to do that, and the jug is a good instrument to do that. But you can vary the rhythm as well, so uh, one rhythm I like to do is... <laughs> Okay, 
that's just a little variation that you can try depending on what feel you want to have for the song and one other thing you might have to do is that if you're playing in a group that already has a bass and they're nailing down those roots and fifths and you don't want to just play exactly what they're playing um, you can treat the jug as a little more of a sound effect instrument and just put in some long notes so if the if the bass is really solidly got this you can try something different So now I'm getting into the last thing I wanted to talk about, which is improvising. And you can play a solo on the jug if your uh, bandmates will let you. And uh, everything we've been talking about up to this point, there's kind of a structure and a tradition to what you're playing. But when you're playing a solo, anything goes. You can just play whatever notes uh, sound good to you and uh, be creative. So I'll try a little solo here. <laughs> So uh, when you're playing a solo, notice when I got to the end, uh, the progression went around one time, and then when it started over again, I went back into just the standard bass note. You can't solo all the time uh, when you're playing with the group. You have to take your turn, and when your turn is over, you should just uh, sort of gel back into the arrangement and let the next person play a solo or sing or whatever. But uh, I guarantee if you get to the point where you have the range and the volume to be able to play a good solo and you take your jug to a jam and pull it out, uh, people will be very excited to see you and you'll get plenty of invitations to play solos. So keep on playing, uh, work up your, your endurance and uh, your range and have fun. <laughs>